Well, the daffodils are coming up. And that means spring's around the corner and it's time to get to work in the garden. trying something new this year. Danielle got a book and when she gets a book it's kind of dangerous because we're basically trying something new every year. This is straw bale gardening and essentially what you do is you condition the bales. You put the bales cut side up and you condition the bales for about 12-13 days. You're going to put nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus. You're going to get a lot of natural uh, organic matter in there and get those bales breaking down and decomposing. Uh, a lot of water too and it's just about to rain so I rushed out here to try to get this done instead of hauling water or pumping water I figured I'd let God water it. So what's going to happen here is once these bales are conditioned we are actually on top of a strawberry bed that we had last year. You can't really see them they're just about popping up now. So when they come up we're going to go ahead and transplant them from the ground into the bales and we're going to have about 300 linear feet of uh, straw bale gardening going here and hopefully this will give us some advantages. First of all these bales are going to hold a lot of moisture but they're also going to drain a lot of moisture. Last season we had torrential rains in the spring and a lot of things were watered out. Well these bales will drain that stuff right out. Uh, some other obvious advantages are good airflow through the strawberries to keep them from rotting, good sunlight access, hopefully 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 that uh, that groundhog our, our gigantic groundhog that eats a lot of our produce, uh, when he sneaks through the fence, he's not going to be able to get up on the bale without getting uh, run down by a dog here. So there's a lot of advantages to this, but we've never done it. So it could be a complete disaster, but it could be a, a, a raving success. So we'll keep you up to date on how it looks in the future. So we head down to the woods and we get this nice sandy compost off the horse track and uh, we basically spread it through the wall of peony. Ah, it's beautiful stuff. springtime comes we have to take these top insulation panels out because as the sun gets higher in the sky the sun actually a lot of the light comes through the top of the wall of peony whereas in the winter it doesn't there's nothing that comes through the top because the sun isn't high enough so we take these insulation panels out let a little bit more light come in from the top there and uh, the toughest one to get out is the first one it's like a piece of pie the first piece is always hard to get out after that, you reach over the top of the other one and knock it out. So, let's get to it. Danielle has made a mess on the driveway here. 
Trimming the grapevines. What you doing, Mama? Pruning. So, when pruning grapes, in theory, the pruning process makes perfect sense. In reality, it's not quite so easy identifying the one-year-old wood from the older wood. And uh, I'm definitely, I screwed it up the first couple of years, so now I'm kind of in a rehab process. And I'm trying to train the right shape, the right structure, and still kind of hoping I get it right. Well, they look like grapevines. The question is whether we'll get any actual grapes this year. We had a bumper crop last year. Yeah, we did pretty good last year. Well, it started to rain outside, so I uh, decided to cheat and come inside and work on the wallapini. So I've got to get this compost that we pulled up from the track down below incorporated in the soil. So I push all the water lines out of the way, and uh, then I'll hop up there and I'll use this wicked looking claw thingy that twist it into the, into the dirt and gets that stuff down and worked in. It's got a lot of sand in it, so it really loosens up this clay soil here. And then once that's done, I'll pull the lines forward again. And since it's raining outside, I don't want my barrels to overflow, so I'll go ahead and lay the lines back down and let that rain just seep right into the bed. So uh, I'm not sure how long it's going to rain today, but it's nice to be in here because it's warm and dry. So we'll get to work here. So I said that I bring the compost up from the track and I guess I ought to explain kind of what that is. We keep our horses down in the woods on a big trail system and the horses as they walk around there they create stud piles where they drop all the manure and that manure mixes in with the leaf and the sticks and the sand that's down there and we take a big blade and we plow it to the side into big piles and we let it sit there and it composts down to this beautiful horse manure laden, sandy, leafy, full of bugs and worms compost down there in the woods. And then we bring it up every year, uh, several thousand pounds of it, several tons of it, the horses haul it up, and we use it all over the gardens to include in the wallapini here. So that's what bringing up from the track really means when I say that in case, I think Danielle's gonna do a video later on that whole track system and how we maintain our horses. So as it rains outside, that rain comes into the wallapini there by that pipe, and there's one on the other end too. Goes into the barrel, and these barrels, 30 of them, are all connected on the bottom by a PVC. You can see there. That PVC pipe connects every barrel through the bottom of the barrel, so the barrels actually fill from the bottom. There's a screen over the top to prevent mosquitoes. So that's about 1,600 gallons of water right there. And so when it rains, uh, I don't want it to spill over the top, and so as it's raining outside, you can hear some of the raindrops. They kind of stop there for a second. I go ahead and open the valves, and you can see the water dripping out of these lines here. This is the drip tube that we have. And so it slowly feeds the water onto the grow bed. Now these little lines aren't really necessarily placed perfectly right now because they just churned up the soil and I'm uh, getting prepared to plant some plants in here. So it really doesn't matter how they're set out. But what Danielle will do is as she comes and plants these plants, she'll move these little lines around to actually water the plants individually. But uh, it's kind of nice how that water that would otherwise sometimes be a gully washer comes through those barrels and through these drip lines and it'll drip you know I can leave that open for 24 hours or so and I have a basic flow rate I'll show you how I turn these on too everything is gravity fed there are three of these valves along the distance every seven barrels you have those now if I want to hand water I also have that PVC coming out of the wall here and I can just go down here and I can turn that on. Woo! There we go. And uh, it's all gravity fed, but that's how we take rainwater and we drop it onto the grow bed here in the Wallapini. And we're just about to plant some new starts for the season, so we've got a lot of grow bed to, to fill up here. 
question I often get is how we start our seeds around here. We actually use several methods. In the late winter, the wallopini is not quite consistently warm enough to help seeds and seedlings thrive. Even cool season seeds really like temperatures around 60 degrees in the daytime, and sometimes the wallopini just doesn't quite get there, uh, especially when we have the cold snaps. So in order to really get our seedlings off to a good start, I generally plant in seed trays, and then I bring them down to our basement where I have a setup rigged to help them get going. Once they're established in the trays, then I move them out to the wallopini where they continue to grow and thrive. And by then the weather's a little more warm and seedling friendly and the wallopini stays a more consistent temperature. So it works well for us. But I'll show you what I have here behind me. Uh, mind you, this is nothing fancy. It's actually some shelves we just store some extra food on in the basement. And every uh, early spring, late winter time frame, we simply clear off a section of shelving. And as you can see here, we've got some grow lamps and we just put our seed trays on top. Now this is what Ruth helped me plant the other day. You can see they're already sprouting. They've actually only been in here about three days. Uh, unfortunately, you can see Ruth got a little happy with some of the seeds, so I'm going to have to do a lot of thinning, but it works, and she does learn to plant. Um, I water from the bottom, and then I also, about every two days, I just give them a spritz along the surface with a spray bottle. Uh, kind of keeps everything happy. Looks like I'm going to do some thinning of that kohlrabi today, but other than that, it's a pretty simple process. Now, one other thing I'll point out, because this is our basement and our temperatures can sometimes get as low as the 40s, uh, I've actually hung just some scrap fabric we had around the house, some, some spare drapes and such, and I just kind of stapled them to the wood shelves. So when I'm finished working, I actually cover all the way around these seed trays, which helps trap the heat in there. Uh, I usually have a thermometer in there and that keeps it a pretty consistent 70 degrees, um, give or take a few, but it's very, very friendly for seedlings to get started. So we've had really good luck with this and I plan to keep it going at least for now until I have a better option. And later when we move them to the Wallapini, we'll update you. Yeah. Turns out blueberries, a lot of, they need the right soil and we, we planted these a couple years ago and they just weren't doing anything. So we got into our books and decided we're going to dig a three to four foot trench around them and then put in peat moss and uh, stuff from the, the woods down there, sulfur, epsom, wood ash, all sorts of things. and. Uh, and then put them back in the holes. So they look like little sticks right now because it's um, they haven't quite come up yet. But we did the same thing with the lingonberries. But I didn't want to take all this dirt and just run it away. So I broke up the dirt that I dug out of the holes and put it around there because there's a ton of worms in there. And I kind of want those worms to stay there. So it looks like a mess now, but hopefully in a month it's going to be beautiful. So well, we're back in the Wallopini and it's time to get planting. Sean has prepped the bed and got my water lines going. You can still see them dripping here. And uh, he's dumped the compost, so all I'm doing is basically smoothing it out, giving it a last cleanup, and getting the seeds in. I'm running the water uh, hoses, the gravity fed hoses, I still like to give a quick watering just to get the seeds kicked off and make sure there's good soil contact right after I plant them. Well this 
this gets about a third of the wallapini planted. I've got about another third to go. And I'm going to walk down here and show you the growth that has already taken place since the last time you got a peek. You may remember the last little clip we did when we showed you just kind of a day in the life here on the farm. And we had a bunch of little cabbages. I mentioned they were going to take off in this warmer weather we were having. Well, here is one of those cabbages. I believe we're about two weeks since that last video. And this is what's happened to that cabbage. You can also see some of the citrus trees are taking off again, turning nice and bright green. They're really going to do well with this new compost addition that we've just done. And uh, we've got all these little seedlings that we started earlier this season. They're all starting to take off and green up and uh, they'll soon be feeding us. Bunch of carrots there, lettuces, everything is just looking bright and green and a lot like spring. Beautiful. Well, as you can see, we're in full swing here, getting ready for the season. We've got a lot to do, and we're going to be making videos as we go along the way. The best way for you to keep up with us is to subscribe to our channel, and that way you will be the first to know that we have a new video as I'm being attacked by animals here. But go ahead and subscribe, and you can follow our journey.